Let's bring in ABC's Jay O'Brien along with ABC News contributor, former Senator Heidi Heitkamp, ABC News contributor and former DNC chair Donna Brazil on the phone for more. Jay, what do we know right now? We know right now, as you just saw in that obituary, that the senator has passed away. The exact moments of, of, of what has caused her to pass away is unclear. We know for recent weeks and months she has struggled with her health. She was out for a time, remember, from February to May in the Senate because she had shingles and then she had complications from shingles called Ramsey-Hunt syndrome. So she was out from a time for that. When she returned to the Senate, she was moving around in a wheelchair. We can tell you that from having watched her in the Senate hallway, she was getting a lot of assistance from her staff so questions about her health had dogged her for some time but we don't know what exactly led to her death today Diane Heidi first I just want to say I'm sorry for your loss I know this is an emotional time for you so thank you for coming on and I want to let's just start by asking you tell me what Senator Feinstein meant to you um, you know, it's interesting because I watched that. And yes, she was an icon. She was a force to be reckoned with. But for many of us, especially the young women senators, she was a friend. She was somebody who was a mentor, who was so generous with her time and with her commitment to women in politics. And, you know, the one thing that's not ever going to get said is she was a convener. When Joe Biden was um, leaving the White House uh, as vice president and everybody thought that was the end of his political career. She convened all the senators at her home and hosted a big event for him. When Hillary decided to run, she brought in all the women senators and we sat around a table and we talked to Hillary one on one. She was she was a force because she was a human being, first and foremost. She looked at what do I need to do to make people feel comfortable? What do I need to do to um, bring people together? She did fundraising for a little known senator from North Dakota, woman trying to become senator from North Dakota in her home in San Francisco. And so, you know, those of us who knew her well remember the humanity of, of Dianne Feinstein. And, you know, I want to make this point. She also was a trailblazer in that she was a big city mayor when there weren't women who were big city mayors and um, always, always led with her convictions, which I don't think a lot of politicians today can say that. And it wasn't always popular. It wasn't popular to be an aisle crosser or to be somebody who, you know, is friendly with the ranking member during contentious hearings. But yet that was her personality. And we shouldn't forget the humanity and the human part of her as a mother, as a daughter, as as somebody who really cared about her friends. Uh, Heidi, considering all that, you know, you're talking about behind the scenes, what she was like for the women that she worked with and the people that she worked with. In terms of, of just the example, you mentioned she was the first woman mayor of San Francisco. She's also the longest running female senator in U.S. history. She's the first female chair of the Senate Judiciary Committee. What do you think she's done for women in politics and the professional world in general? Well, I, I think you can't Overstate, overstate her impact. Number one, you have to remember, she came from a very difficult competitive state. As a Democrat and, and frequently a moderate Democrat in California, um, she tried to become governor. That didn't work as it hasn't worked for a lot of women who are sitting right now in the Senate. But she trailblazed as a mayor. She tried to become governor. She picked herself up from that political loss and became a sitting United States senator and really an icon for all of us who came behind her. And so, you know, it, it it's always interesting to me when you know people and you read obituaries, you think you're missing the most important part, which is that she was just a good friend and so willing and generous with her time. I think both she and uh, Barbara Mikulski, who was also in that uh, realm of um, being a cheerleader, you know, she was never jealous of other women coming up. She always wanted the Senate to be more representative of, of the uh, the the population of the country as a whole. And so uh, this is a very sad moment for us, not just because we've lost a great statesperson who is willing to speak truth to power, but because we lost a really good friend. Donna, talk to me about the party side of this. What does Senator Feinstein mean to the Democratic Party? Well, she means a lot to not just the Democratic Party, but I also think she means a lot to the nation itself. 
I, I met uh, then Mayor Feinstein back during the 1984 Democratic Convention, which was held in her beloved San Francisco. Uh, and then she, at that moment, she was a convener of, of not just women mayors, but members of Congress. And as you might recall, that was the historic year when then former Vice President Mondale selected Geraldine Ferraro. Again, Diane Feinstein brought us together. She healed her city following the death assassination of uh, Harvey Milk. Uh, and when she got to the Senate, that wave of women who came in and took their seats at the table she immediately went to work on the assault weapons ban, on the renewal of the Violence Against, on the actual legislation to uh, have the Violence Against Women Act created. So I, I see her as a role model for not just for women, but for public service itself. Um, I had a great chance to work with her husband on one of the boards I served on, and as the vice chair of the Senate Intelligence Committee, again, she lended her voice not just to women in America, but women across the globe. She will be dearly missed uh, for her service, for her commitment to justice and equality for all people. But more importantly, she was a friend to everyone who came in her presence. And I'm, I, I miss my friend. And hopefully next week, the Democratic Party, we're meeting our last meeting before our convention. We will honor her. We will honor her as someone who embodied that spirit of justice and equality for all people. Jay, how are lawmakers reacting to this? Well, we're starting to get that trickling in, Diane. The other thing we're waiting for at this hour is a statement from the senator's office. Um, but I want to read you some reaction that we're starting to get from some of her Senate colleagues who have obviously begun already, as you just heard Senator Heitkamp doing, remembering her legacy as a trailblazer, remembering her legacy as someone who was so central to the United States Senate for so long. Kirsten Gillibrand, who is a Senate Democratic colleague of Senator Feinstein's, just tweeted this just moments ago. Diane Feinstein was a force to be reckoned with. She was one of the most powerful voices in the Senate, and she blazed a trail for generations of women who followed into her into elected office, who followed her into elected office. I was so grateful to have her as a role model, my mentor, and a dear friend. And that sums up a lot of what we've already begun hearing at this hour. And you can expect, as the Senate starts to trickle in today, because they have a government shutdown still to reckon with here, you're going to hear a lot more senators say a lot more things about Dianne Feinstein. You heard it even even in that obituary package from our affiliate in San Francisco, Chuck Schumer talking about what Dianne Feinstein meant to Senate Democrats, what her legacy meant to Senate Democrats, not just who she was as a person and her blazing of a trail, but also what she did in terms of policy over the years here. She was a staunch advocate for gun control. As you heard in that obituary, she was integral in passing the assault weapons ban in 1994. She was also the trailblazing force and really the driving force behind that a touchstone in history, the Dianne Feinstein Senate torture report, un unveiling some of the aspects of torture in the war on terror and things of that nature. So what you're seeing now is a recognition of Dianne Feinstein's legacy to the United States Senate. And you're likely to hear more of that as the day goes on. Senator Feinstein was criticized recently over the last few years, uh, you know, at times accused of being too cozy with Republicans. What do you think her legacy is in terms of bipartisanship and her ability to work across the aisle over these years? It's interesting because in an era where you're oftentimes looking for bipartisanship in Congress, and you and I often talk about how the American people want to see more bipartisanship in Congress. We see that in polls all the time. Dianne Feinstein was known for being bipartisan, particularly to get those necessary bills across the goal line. The assault weapons ban is a good example of that. And so that is something that we've heard a number of senators already in some of their early statements praise her for. The other thing that's worth pointing out here, Diane, is you mentioned the, the criticism that the senator received. She also received criticism about her health, and there was a lot of aspects uh, of people paying attention to her health in recent weeks and months, as you and I had talked about. She was hospitalized with shingles, and then, of course, she returns to the Senate, and she's operating with a wheelchair. But she says in her statement when she said that she would not seek re-election in February of this year, because the senator had said she would not seek re-election in this upcoming election, that she would continue her work in Congress and continue 
continue to advocate for issues that mattered so much to her, like gun control. And so that is a demonstration, and Democrats recognized this at the time as well, of her saying that despite this criticism, she was going to continue what she viewed as necessary work and work she still felt she had the opportunity to give to the American people. And I want to bring in ABC News political director Rick Klein uh, into this conversation as well. Rick, what does this mean for the Senate moving forward? Well, in the immediate term, it's one less vote, which, you know, normal times might not matter that much. But uh, in these times of divided government, when you're staring down a government shutdown, it's actually quite consequential. And keep in mind, there's pressure on Senator Bob Menendez of New Jersey to resign. Uh, many of his Democratic colleagues asking him to do so in the wake of the, uh, the, the federal indictments last week. Uh, this vacancy will be filled by the governor of California, Governor Gavin Newsom. He is a Democrat. He will shortly choose a Democrat to keep the current balance of power of 50-49-1, essentially, with one independent. Uh, right now, uh, for all intents and purposes, uh, the, the, the Senate is, is back to tie it, although the Democrats will keep their majority. Uh, it's an interesting pivot moment for Gavin Newsom, who considers Senator Feinstein something of a mentor. He himself was the mayor of San Francisco, as uh, Senator Feinstein was before him. He is, also has some experience with filling Senate vacancies when Kamala Harris became vice president. Uh, he, he named uh, uh, Senator Padilla to the, to, to the post. He was actually criticized at the time for not naming a black woman. Stung by that, he said he would name a black woman to this post. But to Jay's point about Senator Feinstein not running for re-election, there's already quite a fight going on for the seat in 2024. And among the, the, the candidates is at least one black woman and Barbara Lee, the congresswoman. Um, Senator, uh, Governor Newsom has said he would not choose someone who's currently running, but he's going to come under enormous pressure to do just that. So the next move is going to be the governor's after some period of mourning. And uh, the, interim, the interim senator will serve through next year's election. Again, the balance of power will come back to where it is right now. Uh, but uh, there's actually quite a bit riding on the choice that Governor Newsom makes. Heidi, that's the uh, impact on the Senate in terms of the logistics. What do you think the impact is on the Senate in terms of the tone? Well, I, I think you're going to find a lot of really sad people in the Senate today. They aren't going to want to turn the page and they want to recognize her you know, commitment to all of her colleagues, her tenacity for a great state of California. If you got in between her and an issue in California, she'd run you over. There's no doubt about that. But I think today is a day to be sad. Today is a day to celebrate an enormous life. And tomorrow, there'll be discussions about what this means um, moving forward. I assume that the governor will expedite his analysis, his uh, decision, um, probably already been thinking about what would happen in, in the what if category. And so I expect that you won't see a change in the balance, but you will see a change in the passage of a great leader who, you know, um, convened everybody who was honest to a fault with everyone. Sometimes they got her in trouble with their colleagues, but I think today is a day that people for remembrance and really for sadness of the passage of a friend. And Donna, in terms of the Democratic Party, over the past few years, we've watched both parties evolve as, as they always do. What do you think Senator Feinstein's passing means for the direction of the Democratic Party going forward? There's no question that she leaves big hills to fill. Um, again, a woman of valor, grace, a great uh, champion of equal rights uh, for the Democratic Party, and I hope for the country, is, is, is that we remember women like Dianne Feinstein open the doors for other women to serve, to take their seats at the table. And so in, in that way, we're going to remember her and light a candle to the wonderful spirit that she was, because she was indeed not just a member of, of the United States Senate, but she was a friend to so many. So this is a very difficult loss for us, but we will continue to carry on in her spirit, knowing that she would want us to fight and continue to light a candle for justice and equality for all people. Jay, how do you think her loss is going to be marked and felt on Capitol Hill today? Well, it's interesting, Diane. One of the things I'm watching is a feed uh, from earlier this morning. I'm watching it on my phone. I'm going to try to get it to you guys as soon as possible from the House Rules Committee this morning. Because you got to remember, 
they're confronting the, the, the strong likelihood of a government shutdown. Their deadline is Saturday, and so there is work ongoing here on Capitol Hill. And so the House Rules Committee meets this morning to look at legislation, and before that, uh, it looks like there was a bipartisan moment of silence in that hearing. And so to, you, to your point about how this will impact Capitol Hill, you're going to watch, it seems, little remembrances of the senator in the daily work here of the United States Capitol as they also look to try to avert a government shutdown by that Saturday deadline. And to your point, the senator was remembered not just as a trailblazer, but also as someone who worked across the aisle when she needed to. Also someone who worked across the chambers of Congress when she needed to, meaning working with the House when she was in the Senate. And that is one of the things that lawmakers are having to confront to do right now in averting this government shutdown. All right, Jay O'Brien, Rick Klein, thank you, and Heidi and Donna, again, I know she was a friend to you, so thank you both as well, and our condolences to you. We'll be right back. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel, and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.